This morning I've come down to one of my local farms just to check the zero on the rifle here. I'm using the Brocock Sniper, this is the XR uh, FAC version rifle in 0.25 calibre. You remember I used this the other week to shoot a few rats with it. Well I had it, um, or I should say I had a Pulsar C50 mounted on there then. I've now got a Helix Dayscope on there, this is the 6-24 model. Nice little scope this, so I use these scopes on my uh, centre fire and rim fire rifles as well. Now. I've got this zeroed at 50 metres, I'm just going to check the zero and then I'm going to put a target out at 100 metres and just uh, suss out what the drops are on that. I've got a pretty good idea but I'm just going to double check, make sure we are uh, where we should be with it. The Sniper XR is a 10 shot rotary magazine so all you do to load it is you turn the magazine rotate it clockwise as far as it will go, drop the first pellet in and then release it against the spring tension which holds it in place and then you drop another nine pellets in and then close the lid over. Oh, that looks good. Take it out to a hundred. As you'd expect, at 50 metres, that's bang on. Let's go and look at the 100 metre target. That's the 100 metre target. Now, we've got four shots on there. Pretty central, pretty, pretty good for height. Uh, it's just the wind here, just got a little bit of a breeze coming across here, which is just moving the point of impact back and forth a little bit. I did try holding off a little bit on this one, but uh, the rest have just drifted over a little bit. But uh, elevation's good, that's about, what was that I dialed in? Uh, 16 MOA for that. So we've got quite a bit of drops, about 16 inches of drop there at 100 metres. But as long as you know what that is and you dial in for it, not a problem. Right, well, we're head down to uh, another farm I've got just around the corner here and have a look, see what's about in the woods. Right, so uh, I'm out on one of my usual little bits of uh, woodland. Um, there's a lot of squirrels in here. You may remember from a few episodes back, I um, shot a few in here. Well, I'm gonna have another little look this morning and see if I can look over another one or two. But uh, if I don't have any luck, then um, I'll maybe have a look in the backfield, see if there's any crows about. And uh, I'll check the um, squirrel feeder while I'm here as well, just to see if they've finally sussed out how to use that or not. That's the first one down. It was only about 25 metres away, he was just foraging around in the leaves. It took me ages to be able to actually get onto him there because there was all like little bits of twig and leaves and stuff in the way. Um, and uh, yeah, it took me a little while to get a decent opportunity at him, but I made it pay, so let's go and get him. Uh, 
and uh, as you can see that's just taking him straight through the shoulder there in one side and out the other so that 25 caliber certainly does upset these little fellas just up front there. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. Lovely. One dead squirrel. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, he didn't give me an awful lot of um, he didn't give me an awful lot there to aim at, but I could just sort of like see, I don't know, just like half of his body, and I was able to put a shot up just underneath his arm there, uh, or his paw I should say, and uh, shoot up through the ribs and uh, straight through the chest, and he's just dropped straight out of that tree, so I'm we'll going to walk over and pick that one up. Just have the rifle here for a minute. Quite a good little spot this to wait. So again, another male squirrel, and so he was facing that way. So you can see that's where the shot went in, just there, and that's where it came out. So it's literally gone, sort of like that, at a sort of 45 degree angle up through the body. So another squirrel down. Well, I'm gonna go back and wait where I was. to use a uh, thermal spotter an awful lot these days for um, squirrel shooting, rat shooting, rabbit shooting, anything really. It's a, a real real game changer. This is um, the Pulsar Mergers. Uh, not a cheap bit of kit, they're quite expensive for this sort of thing, but they are, they are very nice. Um, but uh, you can get cheaper thermal images, which for air gun use and that are perfectly adequate. There's a couple of roe deer as well in this woods, they're always in here and um, I can see they're just tucked up in a bit of cover just up front there, they don't seem to be too bothered about me being here at the minute. But I've seen them here before, there's a, a doe there and um, a young buck. It's nice to see them around. So there's another one about 50 yards in front of me in this tree. He's in, it looks like a bit of a holly bush or something, about halfway up it, so... I'm just going to walk down and uh, see if I can get a shot. Leave them there for a minute. That one was about 40 metres, so still well within the comfort zone of this rifle. Um, he's just dropped straight out of that tree again. Another clean kill. Alright, let's go and grab that one.
that last squirrel was a female, or sow I should call her, that's a proper name for them. Bulls and sows, apparently. What's called man and female? <laughs> I've pretty much walked through the through the main part of the wood now, so um, I'll take these few back and uh, just check on the squirrel feed on the way back through. Well, I was just walking back to the feeder and spotted that one, so I fall down. And that one is another female, or sow, so two of each. So I filled that up a couple of days ago, so they probably cleared half of the nuts out of that, but I had that stick there propping up the lid, which I'll do again, just to encourage them to, to get in there, because they have to lift the lid on this, and um, they don't seem too keen to. I don't think they've quite sussed that out yet. Well that's four squirrels down this morning, so that's not too bad, I'm quite pleased with that. If I can just knock over one or two every time I come out then that's great. But it's quite challenging to shoot squirrels in the wood like this. It's a bit different if they come into a feeder and they're sat eating. It gives you a stationary target at a set range and that's a lot easier than trying to find them in the woods and get a shot of them, especially when they're moving around on the ground. So to get four like that, that's pretty good going. Now, that's not it for this episode. I've got a little gadget which I've been having a little play around with on my centerfire and rimfire rifles, and I think it might well, at its price point, appeal to a few air gun hunters. Well, here it is. This little device from Hick Micro is a night vision add-on for your scope. So it works for a normal standard day scope. Simply attaches to the front, locks on like so. And this little unit is good certainly out to 100 metres. Um, I've used it out to probably 200 metres with a, an additional IR on there. And I've used it for foxing and it's been brilliant. So you've got a built-in IR here. Uh, it runs on a single 18650 battery. You can still use your illuminated reticle, your, you can dial your scope in. You can basically use your normal day scope in exactly the same way as you normally would. You can even zoom in, although when you do zoom in, it does get a little bit pixelated. But all in all, I think at its price point, which is around about 750 quid, I think that's a lot of um, scope for your money. And as I say, this is the Hick Micro Cheetah. So if you're interested in a night vision unit, that's well worth having a look at. So I was just heading back to the truck and I've seen down this path here there's a couple of rabbits chasing about. They've gone into the hedge at the minute but I'm just going to go down here a little bit further and wait and see if they come back out. Well, that rabbit was 45 metres. Um, there was two of them out there chasing about, and that one just ran out and stopped long enough for me to get a shot, so I managed to shoot that, but the other one went off into the uh, hedgerow before I got a chance of that. 
but uh, one out of two, so better than none. Oh, I was going to pick that up. So that's a good, healthy buck rabbit there. Interesting little white flash of fur on the top of his head there, it's quite unusual. And it looks like that's just hit him just a little bit lower than I intended, but um, nonetheless it's killed it cleanly. So, yeah, good rabbit that. So my little scope camera here, the battery's just about to die on that. So um, I'm going to call it a, a day for today, but I hope you've enjoyed the episode and thanks for watching. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.